Israel Iran War News Israeli police clash with hostage return protesters. Protesters demanding the return of Israeli captives held by Hamas in Gaza clashed with Israeli police in Tel Aviv on Saturday, as thousands gathered to rally against the government. Near the southern Israeli city of Ashdod, close to the U.S. built pier where the Israeli military has claimed humanitarian aid is entering Palestinian territory, a small U.S. military vessel and what seemed like a docking space washed up on a beach, reports of Israeli bombardments in central and northern Gaza also surfaced on Saturday. Protesters in Tel Aviv displayed images of the female soldiers who had been featured in a film earlier this week depicting their abduction shortly after the October 7 strike on Israel by Hamas sparked the conflict between the two sides. Protesters waved placards that read Stop the War and Help. There are still dozens of hostages held captive, and they demanded that the government negotiate their release. Protesters demanded fresh elections and also asked that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu resign. A member of the Women Protest for the Return of All Hostages group, Hilat Sagi, stated, We all saw the video, we could not stay at home after the government abandoned all these people. Following the assault that resulted in the deaths of over 1,200 people and the kidnapping of 250 others, divisions inside Israel have grown regarding Netanyahu's management of the conflict with Hamas. According to Israel, there are still about 100 hostages in Gaza, along with the dead of another 30 or so. Whether by military action, a hostages arrangement, or negotiations, they are not doing nearly enough to ensure the return of the hostages. Snur Dehan, the uncle of hostage Carmel Gat, told reporters that the situation in Gaza is unchanged. Two Israeli armies confirmed on Friday that they had recovered the bodies of three hostages from Gaza earlier in the week. After the raid, the army claimed to have killed them and transported their bodies to Gaza. Less than a week prior to the disclosure, on October 7, the army had previously announced the discovery of the bodies of three further Israeli hostages. During a week-long ceasefire in November, Israel freed Palestinian captives held by Hamas and other militants, freeing over half of the 250 hostages. Nearly 2.3 million Palestinians, including nearly 80 percent of the displaced population, call the enclave home. Netanyahu's government is under mounting pressure to end the conflict and for humanitarian supplies to enter. The head prosecutor of the International Criminal Court sought arrest warrants for Israeli leaders and Hamas officials this week, and three European nations also declared their intention to recognize a Palestinian state. Rafah is a city in southern Gaza, and on Friday, the International Court of Justice ordered Israel to stop its military offensive there and open the border crossing nearby so that vital humanitarian supplies can enter. Additionally, the highest on court has demanded that Israel grant entry to Gaza for the purpose of investigating any war crimes. The judges did not go so far as to demand a complete cessation of hostilities throughout Palestinian land and it is highly improbable that Israel will adhere to the court's decision. During the conflict in Gaza, South Africa accused Israel of carrying out genocide against the Palestinians, a charge that Israel strongly denies. Islam Abu Kamar, who relocated from Gaza City to Rafah in the aftermath of Israel's ground campaign in response to the October Hamas onslaught, expressed his hope that the war will eventually come to a close to almost the course of the last two weeks, as Israeli forces advanced further into Rafah, almost one million Palestinians had escaped the city. Eight operations are on the verge of collapse, according to the United Nations and relief organizations, in part because of Israel's control of the Rafah border crossing this month. The bridge is a vital transit point for gasoline and supplies for Gaza. According to Israel, the only way to eliminate Hamas' final stronghold is to assault Rafah. The Karim Shalom border crossing is Israel's primary access point into southern Gaza, and Egypt has stated that it has agreed to allow UN humanitarian supply trucks to pass through it. The truck's ability to enter Rafah is still up in the air, though, because to the ongoing violence. According to Israel, humanitarian supplies are entering Palestinian territory via the U.S.-built dock in northern Gaza. Near the southern Israeli city of Ashdod, a small U.S. Navy boat and what seemed like a docking area strip washed up on a beach on Saturday. 
two of the U.S. Central Command's ships anchored close to the Gaza Shore Pier, while two others were in Israel, as a result of the strong seas that were impacting the humanitarian relief effort. There were no casualties, according to U.S. sources, and the U.S. is assisting the Israeli army in retrieving the ships, according to Central Command. When the pier is operating at full capacity, American officials are hoping to send 150 truckloads of aid to Gaza every day. USAID estimates that 600 truckloads of food, emergency nutritional treatments, and other supplies are needed daily to rescue the people of Gaza from the verge of starvation and alleviate the humanitarian crisis caused by the Israel-Hamas war, which has been going on for seven months. Saturday saw more Israeli shelling of the territory, with reports of attacks in central and northern Gaza. Attacks on Jabalia and Nuzirat reportedly resulted in casualties, according to eyewitnesses. The health ministry reports that over 35,000 Palestinians have lost their lives in the conflict. This number does not differentiate between civilians and combatants.